Good morning, everyone. There we go. Here we go. Welcome. It is great to have you all here today. This is such an accomplished group. I have to say, we at Dan are, are incredibly proud that you've accepted our invitation and that you're joining us for what uh, beckons to be a fantastic day. And I hope to kick you off here uh, with some thoughts. In fact, your presence here today represents our shared commitment to really advance healthcare through innovation and, of course, collaboration. We'll talk about how big the challenges are and all the things we have to overcome to get to that which we know is possible, but I think together we can do it. And I want to start us off by thinking about, you know, the theme of the conference here, uh, where we talk about diagnostics from insight to impact, right? So thinking about how we might not only understand the science and understand diseases, modes of action, but also to understand how we can affect human health at scale with the rigor required to achieve accessibility and broad adoption at pace. So we've got great ambitions uh, for the day today. So let's consider as a model the signature collaborative scientific effort of this century, the Human Genome Project. You know, it's been already two decades since the sequencing of the first human genome, and today we are sequencing millions of genomes and generate data on a peta and terabyte scale as a matter of course. That's business as usual already. It's amazing how far we've come in just those 20 years. Now, as you know, genomic data is only the beginning. Multi-omics has given us much more, like what you see on this slide. This is from a study that used single cell and spatial transcriptomics to identify different types of cells in a tumor microenvironment to predict the growth and the spread of melanoma. Think about that. So no longer are we putting the genes into sort of a blender and figuring out the average. Now we're looking at individual cells. We're looking at their geolocation, if you will. We're understanding how the microenvironment affects the growth of the cancer. Many of you have heard of the, the cold uh, cancer as well as the hot one. Much of that is derived from pictures just as this one, uh, which is just amazing in terms of how quickly we've advanced. And it's just one example of the promise of multiomic data, especially when it's integrated with clinical data to drive new personalized approaches to healthcare. Now, the exponential growth of genomic medicine is what inspired us to launch the Danaher Summits as a series last year. And in our first event, we focused on genomic medicine with many of the pioneers of that field in attendance. And you see the pictures here. And I have to tell you, every time I see it, I'm so proud that the rock stars of genomic medicine are part of the Danaher team and working with us through several collaborations already uh, in advancing uh, the science as well as how we can make genomic medicine not only more effective but more accessible. Now, at that same event at the Boston Club, some of you were there, we made public commitments, including a promise to accelerate the delivery of value-based diagnostics, so important to improve accessibility, because progress in genomics and progress in diagnostics are intertwined. Now, take, for example, one new set of technologies that lives at that intersection of diagnostics and genomics. <clears throat> the example here is highly sensitive detection platforms that enable less invasive, invasive sampling and testing. And you're all familiar with liquid biopsies that measure circulating tumor DNA in cells to detect and monitor cancer. But we can even go further now. In fact, we can imagine blood-based tests for other diseases, such as Alzheimer's. And many of you, some of you certainly, uh, may have relatives who are afflicted with Alzheimer's and understand that this is a disease that doesn't just uh, destroy individuals, but in, it can destroy entire families in terms of the burden that it has, and is a huge um, wave, snowball, that is coming at society as we continue to age, particularly in what we call the developed markets. Alzheimer's is pervasive and needs a solution. Now, using these extremely sensitive technologies, 
we can pick up newly identifiable analytes, biomarkers, as an alternative to this invasive sampling of cerebrospinal fluid. Imagine that, spinal taps versus a blood tap. Um, unbelievable uh, the difference that would make. And there's so many benefits. Not only would this be more practical, think of how much easier that is, less costly so it's more accessible, but think about how much more comfortable uh, and uh, fast all that is for both the patient as well as the clinician. All of this is right in front of us. We can touch it. So as with genomics, we can now democratize multi-omic technologies to make them more broadly accessible and affordable for diagnosis, eventually through the point of care and decentralized testing, right? As we do today, perhaps with genetic testing, PCR testing, multi-omic testing at the point of care is right there. We can touch it. And that allows us to elevate our diagnostics uh, capabilities and to start diagnosing some of the more vexing diseases and treat them more quickly. And I'm proud to say that Danaher's operating companies are working in this area, respectively, with both spatial omics and proteomics. And of course, to make sense of all this, all this new data, all this information, we have the power and potential of artificial intelligence to yield clinical, clinically actionable insights by applying this massive compute to multimodal data. We now have the ability to actually get after all this data and make sense of it, including what's on the electronic medical records. So we'll hear some great examples of this power put to use later today in our lightning presentations that Vanessa just spoke of. I love this picture. It is an amazing uh, engineering feat, but it's also a Gordian knot and it requires us to do a lot of work to figure out where we're going very quickly. All this promise I just spoke of, uh, there's just so much that we still need to do to unlock the potential of diagnostics to bring about a new era of precision medicine for all. It's my personal conviction, and perhaps you professionals uh, are with me here as well, that diagnostics is one of the essential disciplines in healthcare to unlock and revolutionize how we deliver healthcare. Imagine the right diagnostic for the right patient at the right time that not only diagnoses accurately, but also starts playing out what the treatment options are, and furthermore, discusses whether the, the patient is a responder to the recommended treatment options, right? Because we prescribe a lot of things based on the indication, based on the diagno by diagnosis, but the phenotype doesn't always respond. In some ways, we are different as individuals, despite the fact that we're nearly identical from a genetic perspective. So diagnostics as a critical catalyst, ultimately, to melt away cost in the healthcare system by ensuring that that which we do goes to responders for the therapeutics, and that alternatively we are able to mine the data of the non-responders to start developing new hypotheses around biomarkers and disease pathways in order to treat them as well, so more uh, effective therapeutics. So the industry stands at a crossroads, and really every major stakeholder, and all of you are here in the audience, across this innovation ecosystem is facing multiple pressing challenges that limit the impact of innovation on how we deliver healthcare today. Just a couple examples. You scientists make transformative discoveries, and I'm nearly as frustrated as you on how long it takes to get those innovations integrated into the healthcare system as a standard of care to have an impact for patients. Physicians are bombarded daily by clinical data they can't possibly interpret on their own much less make decisions and action on it. And all of you have walked through the, uh, the emergency rooms. All of you have walked through some of the critical care settings. And you see that the data overload and the alarms going off and the amount of action that we can actually take are overwhelming. Now, payers, the much maligned payers, well, they have to make tough decisions as to what to support and what to reimburse 
And they often have to do this with imperfect information, of course, and standards that, you know, at times are inconsistent. That might be the best of case. And in the worst of cases, they're conflicting. And these payers are in that situation, whether they are national health care services or whether they are for-profit health care companies, uh, it is a thicket of conflicting information uh, and very, very difficult to make the right decision. And then you all know hospitals have to bring all of these cha challenges together and they have to solve them while delivering high quality health care at the individual level as well as at the population level. Huge challenge. And amidst it all, we as patients are getting a new voice. We have chat GPT to ask, right? Not just Google anymore. And we have a new voice and we're demanding the best care as we should. We all want the best care for our loved ones, for our friends, and of course also for ourselves. We work, we work hard for that. So in short, we are really in a time of change. We have to unravel the crossroads that Gordian knot. And one way to do this is to make the next 20 years a golden age for diagnostic as a critical catalyst, as an enabler for what can be a revolution in healthcare, more accessible, more effective, and more equitable. So at Danaher, we're eager to work with all of you in building that future. Our diagnostics businesses are industry leaders that improve diagnostic confidence around the world from local clinics, family physicians offices, to top cancer, trauma, and critical care centers. And we operate across six continents and generate digital data to enable precision diagnostics and improve health outcomes. Honestly, I, I'm always astounded at the capabilities across our diagnostics operating companies and the 23,000 associates that jump out of bed every morning ready to make it happen for patients around the world. So here are just a few examples. Every day, nearly one million blood samples are tested using radiometer instruments. So think of high sensitivity troponin, think of uh, uh, different kinds of immunoassays, blood gas. Every hour, one million diagnostic tests are run on Beckman diagnostic instruments around the world. Microbiology, uh, immunoassays, clinical chemistry, hematology, it goes on and on around the world. One million an hour. And since 2010, Cepheid has delivered more than 100 million tuberculosis test cartridges around the world and including very much so in high disease burden countries. So it's all very impressive, I know, but think about it in this context. Almost 18 million patients are diagnosed with cancer each year around the world, and those are the ones we know about. Brain disease accounts for 276 million disability adjusted life years annually. That's a huge percentage of the 8 billion of population we have around the world. And we don't even know how many people catch infectious diseases each year. Not in this country, never mind the rest of the world. It's just too many to count. So the reality is there is so much to do. And honestly, we can't do it alone. But we stand ready to collaborate with our partners, you, in this endeavor. In fact, this is an especially exciting day for us as partners, and Vanessa alluded to this uh, earlier, because not only are we here with you, which is absolutely wonderful, we're also launching a new partnership as we speak. Wouldn't you have liked to have gone to that university? I mean, that's just fabulous. I love this picture. This is not what my university looked like. OK, so well, just this morning, the University of Oxford announced a new collaboration with Danaher and our operating company, Cepheid, to co-develop a new diagnostic test for sepsis. And you know sepsis is a pathological immune reaction that accounts for one out of five deaths globally every year. One out of five. So this type of collaboration is called a beacon at Danaher because it lights the way forward and I find the picture uh, particularly fitting in that, in that context. Now, this test will use diagnostic technologies provided by Cepheid to pinpoint subtypes of sepsis and indicate which targeted therapies are the most likely to help. As we talked about earlier, 
Are we going to have a responder here in front of us for the therapeutic alternatives that we have? It also has the potential to ensure patients are treated in the most appropriate setting and to minimize the risk of overuse of antibiotics. And we'll hear from Lord Darcy uh, later today about all the risks associated with that. So it will build on the research from the laboratory of Julian Knight, a professor of genomic medicine at Oxford, and a world-renowned expert in sepsis biology. And Dr. Knight is here with us today. Dr. Knight, wave for us. A big welcome to Dr. Knight. And we'll hear more from Dr. Knight and his partners about the new beacon uh, later on during the course of the agenda. So this is just one example of the exciting discussions we have going on in this room. And as I alluded to earlier, when we had our Genomic Medicine Summit, many collaborations arose out of that uh, gathering as well. Now, of course, what ultimately matters most will happen well beyond this room. And so before we kick off our discussions, I want you to briefly hear from some of our stakeholders who won't be able to be on our, on our stage today. And they do represent clinical perspectives on how we can bring diagnostic innovation to the world stage, not today, but tomorrow. And at Danaher, we've been engaging in different ways with each of these stakeholders over the last few months, and they will set the tone for each one of our panels, and Vanessa set those up beautifully. They've given us a wish list for what we might begin to achieve, which I'm honored to share with you. And I'd like to start with a stakeholder perspective that matters most to all of us, I think, and that's the patient, the patient for whom we do everything we do. Darren? I wish that patients waiting for an answer to a healthcare concern were treated with VIP status. I wish we could improve the sensitivity of our uh, molecular diagnostics method. I wish to make available all these new platforms and tests to all the patients around the world to improve their outcomes. I wish we could collect biospecimens from children in a non-invasive way. I wish we had a better way to pay for and make equitably available all of these exciting new diagnostics. I wish for consistency across all payers. What if we could monitor cancer just with a blood test? What if we had a better way to collect data and act on it at scale? What if we had universal agreement about what made a good test? What if patients had the opportunity to move through a healthcare journey in a very seamless fashion? No friction, no delays, no waiting. We need to be able to translate all our cancer biology knowledge that we have accumulated in academia to the benefit of the patient. We need a better way for patients to understand their results in real time. We need researchers and clinicians and administrative officials to prioritize research in children so that they can keep up with the advances that we're seeing in adults. We need transparency and collaboration. We need meetings like this. We need collaboration, we need focus, we need energy. It's time to do better. It's time to do better. It's time to do better. It's, it's time, time to, to work, work together. together. So you can see the need is there, the desire is there, and our stakeholders are, are demanding progress from us. So what do you say, you ready to get started? Are you ready to get started? All right, then let's rock, thank you.